Hey guys, Steve here at the Scroll Saw Workshop. What you just saw before the intro there was a little tool that I put together to use on my Seiko ST21 Scroll Saw. Now, if you own this saw or if you've watched any reviews of it, uh, you know that um, when you tilt the head of this scroll saw, you do it by loosening the knob down here underneath the table and you just take the, either hold the knob or grab a hold of the head and you just move it. Most scroll saws have a rack and pinion where when you turn a dial it moves it left to right and they made the design decision for a good reason uh, but it didn't work out for me to make this a free floating head and you just move it to where you want it and then you tighten it down. Now I find that difficult to do. Some people seem to really like the idea because it does give them a very, uh, you have an unlimited uh, accuracy with that as long as you can get it where you want it, hold it there and then tighten it down without it moving. Now what I normally do is I loosen it a little bit and when I get it close then I start tapping on this head to get it zeroed in. Most of the time you don't need that level of accuracy uh, but it's a little bit of a problem that I've had and I was out in the shop working on a couple of different jigs this one came to mind so I put it together so I'm going to take this off the saw real quick get it up here on the bench and show you what I've done maybe it'll be something you're interested in also here's what I came up with and it's a very simple lead screw type design and this is the part that captures the knob that you loosen to rotate the head left or right and simply by clamping this to the frame and I'll show you that in a minute because it goes on in seconds and comes off in seconds if you need it out of the way when you turn this of course it's going to move the clamp left or right depending on how you do it and this tilts the head back and forth in fairly fine increments um, well actually unlimited increments because this lead screw can stop at any point and then of course to bring it back you just crank it the other direction now, I haven't put together plans for this yet, but if there's any interest out there, I will. So just let me know and we'll work on that. Let's zoom in here a little closer and just show you how I built it. The tool uses this steel lead screw that I bought at Home Depot. They're inexpensive and I cut it down to 23 and a half inches. And that 23 and a half inches allowed me to cover enough area to tilt the Seiko scroll saw to its ultimate or maximum left and right positions. Uh, so that's the length of, this, of why the screw is 23 and a half inches. The wood is just simply a channel that allows the clamp to ride in. It's held into place with two nuts on each side that are clamped against each other to hold them in the fixed position. And uh, when I put the final jig together, I'll probably epoxy these to each other so they don't move. Um, I hate to do that. I might just use hot glue because, you know, if this breaks, you want to be able to remove it. And if I epoxy it, that's going to be pretty hard. The shaft goes through these two end pieces using these four pronged capture. I think they call them T-nuts right here. Uh, so the lead screw is actually turning between this point and this point in a nut in each end. And that keeps everything nice and straight and uh, able to um, move left and right. So it's really just that simple. The dimensions I came up with simply uh, so they would fit underneath the, scrawl, uh, underneath the saw onto the stand. And I use, to hold it onto the stand, I use these C-clamps. And they work great. I can orient the clamp part inside the stand so they don't get in the way. And that's it. When you Obviously, once you turn the... the uh, handle here and the handle was just cut on the scroll saw and again I put a nut inside there and epoxy that all together so it would say stay, stay strong and I just simply put this little dowel on the end to give me something to hold on to as I turned it. I also left a little bit of the thread sticking out here and I did that because I thought it would be fun to motorize this. Um, it's not very useful because it goes too fast but you can clamp your drill hand drill onto here and uh, move it large increments really fast and I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, I'm going to put it back on and then we'll take a closer look at it. I'll get you a better angle here in a minute and uh, get a closer look at it, but for right now I just want to show you um, I have one C-clamp right here and it's oriented with the handle in the back. So here's the frame and the cross member of the frame. The clamp is clamped to this piece right here and it just simply you push the jig in uh, until the uh, 
clamp goes up and captures the handle. And again, I'll get underneath here in a minute and give you a better look. And then you just simply take these clamps, get the thing parallel, tighten the clamp down and you're ready to go. And I found that they don't have to be super tight, just enough to hold it in place. There's not a tremendous amount of pressure uh, right here. Once this handle is loose, there's not all that much pressure when you turn the clamp to tilt the blade. And you can see it works pretty good. Now let's talk about a couple of the limitations of it. Okay, we're down here underneath the saw now, and I'm doing this handheld, so I apologize for the shaky video, but I just wanted to get you a better look at it. Here's the handle that, of course, we loosen to adjust the head of this saw, and you can see how it is clamped between, or it is captured between the two parts of this clamp. One of the weakness of this, I think, is going to be the strength of this piece right here. So I'm actually going to get some uh, right angle metal brackets and reinforce this along here just to try to make sure it doesn't break. I think that's one weakness. It seems to be working okay. It doesn't appear to be all that much pressure exerted against this clamp as it moves. Uh, so it's working and uh, if it breaks I'll build another clamp and uh, put those L brackets on it and see if that helps. Another thing that's a little bit of a problem right now is when I drill the hole through this clamp to pass this lead screw through, there's a little bit of slop in there. So when you start going from one direction to the opposite direction, it tends to tilt just a little bit to take up that slop so you don't get an immediate reversal into the other directions. And that's not that important except for just when you get ready to clamp this back down or to tighten it back up so your head doesn't move, that just that turning that knob has a tendency to want to move the head just a little bit. And to prevent that, if you turn the knob slightly in the other direction just to hold it in place while you tighten it, uh, that keeps the head from moving when you tighten this down. And rather than just being a little back pressure on the knob over here, you actually have to turn it just a little bit to get that back pressure. So I think what I'm going to do is get a, a metal tube to go through here uh, that will match the uh, 3 8 inch diameter of this lead screw and see if I can take up some of that slack. I drilled the hole through this wood at 3 8 of an inch, uh, but it's still just a little bit sloppy. Right now, like I said, I'm using these C-clamps to hold it in place. I think I'll probably try to come up with a little easier, quick disconnect uh, than the clamp. There probably are times you're going to want to take this off, although with this large handle, let me loosen it again. With this large handle, it doesn't take a whole lot to move this thing to its max extremes. It actually goes pretty quick, so I don't know how important that's going to be. So. That's what it looks like. I know it's probably not something everybody uses or would use, uh, but for me, I like coming up with new uh, tools to make my job a little bit easier, and that's what I did here on this Seiko scroll saw. Just to give you an example, I've got the head loose, so I'm set at 90 degrees, and we'll turn it over to what I would call a negative 20 degrees, just so you get an idea of the speed. And I'm just turning the handle at a moderate rate. I'm not trying to go too fast. So there we are at 10 degrees. Actually, that was 20 degrees. I'm sorry, I didn't read the scale right. So it took just a matter of seconds to adjust it over 20 degrees. And we can take it all the way over to this saw's max in just a few more seconds. Right there. So that's all it took. Now, there's another problem that I have to work on. If you try to turn this past 90 degrees, I suspect it would break that wooden clamp. Uh, so I might come up with some kind of way of limiting how far it can actually turn uh, before it starts breaking pieces. And bringing it all the way back to 90 degrees, just like that. But it works pretty good. 
Okay, that's what I've been working on in the shop uh, this week. Just playing around, coming up with some uh, ideas for different types of jigs and tools. I'm always, always enjoy just going in the shop and making stuff. Uh, sometimes it uh, comes out good, sometimes it comes out like junk. But in this case, I think this is kind of handy and something I probably will use. Make a few modifications to it, put it together a little more solid, and I think it'll be good to go. If anyone is interested in me coming up with a set of plans for you know the sizes of the wood to cut and uh, the different parts you need just let me know and uh, it won't take me too long to sit down in corral draw and actually put together a set of plans for this uh, once i get it finalized so just shoot me an email let me know and uh, i'll work on that also i'm steve good thanks for being here with me at the scroll saw workshop and we'll see you next time